Hello everyone, this is Yusai. Welcome to Let's Talk. And this week has been so special for me because I had an opportunity to meet with so many different female photographers. We've been talking about the amazing work they do for the industry as well as their journey, how they become the photographer. Now, many photographers from celebrity photographers to fashion photographer. And today I get to meet with Kate Powers, who truly is a photographer that focuses on amazing causes as she works. So everybody say hi to Kate. Hello. Thank you for having well, me. Thank you for joining me. Well, yeah. first of all, everybody always wants to know where are you right now? Brooklyn, New York, Carroll Gardens. Sun's out. It's a nice day here. It looks like a nice day. I can see the light yeah, coming through beautiful. from behind you. It's very, very symbolic yes. of you. I it's worked very... on my light. I wanted to get it right. <laughs> well, as photographers, we better have our lighting correct yeah, on these right? IGs. So we're going to be yeah. like... <laughs> judging each other <laughs> judging well Kate let's just jump right into it let's talk about your journey how did you became Kate Powers photographer so it um was never anything I ever could have dreamed up when I was growing up I grew up uh, mostly in Southern California a little bit in Texas I went to UC Berkeley in Northern California to study English lit I love taking pictures as a hobby but I didn't have any exposure to the fashion industry, the advertising industry. My parents were academics. It just wasn't on my radar. So at Berkeley, I tried to take photo classes when I could to learn, you know, printing and processing. And I did it through the art studios. And I started shooting bands for the Daily Cal newspaper. I was like the like music photographer. So you were cool in school. Um, you were cool. I thought I was cool, but it definitely wasn't cool. But it was, you know, 1994, 95, 96. It was like, you know, Berkeley punk scene. And, you know, we were at all the shows. And I mean, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and eventually, it just I just always thought it would be a hobby. It was something I was exploring creatively. I loved it. Um, and then our undergraduate thesis class was about gender representation in media and culture. And there was a group of us that got together. Um, and we decided to design a magazine as part of this undergraduate thesis. And it was a time when there really wasn't much content out there for women. It was all glamor, allure. There were a ton of men's magazines. Um, and it was when a bunch of sort of zine scene stuff had started to happen. It was bitch and bust and all of this kind of alternative content had tried to come to light. In fact, Sports Illustrated Women tried to launch an issue. It was like, how are we gonna sort of harness these this new era of women and what they want to be seeing and consuming so the group of us thought we had this big idea and we put together this little magazine i art directed it because i was the only one with any interest in the arts and we pub ended up publishing it for about four years in berkeley wow. um, quarterly which was great and i ended up communicating with all the photographers and designers and heading up all the design because that was you know my area of interest and i started meeting local photographers so I would have like fifty dollars to spend on a portrait of a you know of a poet that we were. So speaking. the budget hasn't really changed much. No, though. not at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The editorial budgets have not changed since nineteen ninety three. Pretty true, guys out there. It's yeah. pretty consistent. I think yeah. it actually got less. It's volunteer. Yeah, you don't do editorial work for the money. That's for sure. We're all volunteers yeah. giving back to the community, giving back to the arts. Exactly. So. I started meeting these local photographers in the Bay Area in San Francisco and, you know, they just were fascinating to me. I just was so inspired by these, these women that were, you know, forging out these photography careers. And I became friends with a lot of them. And eventually they just started to educate me about the business. They, they said, if you love photography, why don't you assist? I was like, what's assisting? I've never even heard of it. Well, what's interesting is that you were in San Francisco when the art scene was so prevalent at that time. The Berkeley right. movement came out of that period. The music scene came out of that period. So you were surrounded by all these influences without knowing that it was actually a pivotal time for the arts. Right. And in and, and Berkeley, women empowerment has always yeah. been a Berkeley's yeah. foundation. It's in and my blood. <laughs> it's in your blood, which explains yeah. everything about you because yeah. your work definitely embodies women empowerment. Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. It's like when you look back on, I mean, that was a long time ago, you know, I've been doing this now for almost 20 years. So, you know, it doesn't feel that that far away from who I am now, but it's been a big journey since then. And that definitely is a part of who I am now. It's just taken me a long time to find my own voice in it and to find my place in this industry. So I started to say, what is that voice? What is that voice? What is that voice that you have found and defined yourself in? Well, I think the biggest thing that I've found is that 
photography and beauty. You know, I started as a lifestyle photographer and I didn't really want to do fashion because I didn't think I had a place in it. And the older I've gotten and the more comfortable I've gotten in, in what I sort of have to say, what I bring to a set and sort of as I've pushed into beauty, which is, you know, one of my real passions in photography now, you know, you realize that, you know, part of what I bring is this like collaboration with these women, you know, like I want to sit with them. I want to be with them. I want them to feel safe and comfortable. I want them to feel like they're themselves. I want them to have the freedom to express and communicate I want it to just be a really fluid, collaborative experience. You know, I don't generally walk into a shoot and say, this is what we're doing and this is, you know, my vision and this is what we're going to do to execute it. Like, I really rely on the teams and the girls and everybody from my digital tech and my assistants and the music. And, you know, I really try to make it a joyful experience and I want that to come through in the imagery as well. And was that was that always the case from the very beginning of your photo shoot? Was that always been your philosophy? Because we know in the last five years and three years actually yeah. that the industry have changed and they have really have followed this this philosophy, what you just said. It's really being a collaborative environment. That took a long time to to find its footing. But did you have that already before this industry evolved? I do. I mean I think that I've been, you know, I because I haven't sort of pitched myself into high fashion and that wasn't the route that I tried to take or ever really wanted to take. I mean, I love fashion. I love clothes, you know, but I love beauty and I love lifestyle and I love the emotion of just photography. And to be honest, I just love that we even get paid to take pictures. I just think it's a sort of mind blowing experience, you know? Um, so I've always kind of had this collab. I really have, you know, strive to surround myself with collaborators, you know, and work with clients that, or, you know, feel that mood and want me to bring what I bring and they we bring what they bring. And, you know, we put well, a team together that's right for each project, which I think is really it's, important. It's interesting for me to hear that because in my early careers um, as a photographer, before I was doing all photography, I was a treatment writer. And and for those who don't know what that is, that was the treatment writings for TV commercials, the commercials, advertising people write a commercials and they send to directors and they ask directors to write a treatment, how they would actually proceed that particular concept and how would they execute. And I was a ghost writer for a lot of uh, directors in the very beginning and they were all women. Somehow I, I understood and how to speak through a woman's voice in my writing. <laughs> Not necessarily how I would capture the imagery because obviously I wasn't director at the time yet. I was just writing scenes that I think would come from a, a woman's perspective. Now, however, what I have learned through that time and, and not naming particular directors, I work with Peggy Stroda, I work with um, you know, Luke Bassan, I work with uh, the, Ken Thomas, all the women photographers mm -hmm. and directors that you, I'm sure you know of. Right. And I often find when I'm on set with them that they have to take an extra edge to prove themselves that they can lead a set. They are here to stay. They have much gusto as a, a male director. Do you find that in a female photographer perspective? I've just taken a different approach completely from the very beginning. And maybe it was because I feel like sort of an accidental photographer. Like I didn't come in, you know, with sort of aggressive ideas about where I wanted to be or where I wanted to take this. Um, I've just really enjoyed the ride the whole way. And I just, you know, you catch more honey, you catch more bees with honey, whatever they say. You know, well, I just have been like, I just feel like those are the kind of people I want to be around. Those are the people I want to make pictures with. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to intimidate people. I don't want to bully people. And I don't want to work with people that, treat their crews like that. So, you know, I've been really lucky along the way to have cultivated a career where I've been able to do that, you know. I, I, I'm going to say that ha that has a lot to do with the fact that you were drinking West Coast water. Sorry. <laughs> For those East Coast people who hear. It's all the West Coast water. Guys, sorry. It is. <laughs> but, 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 but let's talk about that a little bit. Philosophically, coming from the East, coming from the West, it does make a difference because in our industry that we judge what location you're from. If you said, I'm from the Midwest and I want to be a fashion photographer, there's a natural pushback that, mm -hmm. oh, what do you know about fashion? Are you from Los Angeles? Are you drinking the water on the West Coast? That right. means, you know, okay, you, you know what? You're good lifestyle photographer because you have sun there. We, we just deal with buildings and so we create art. And this is the vernacular that has happened throughout centuries of our business, right? right. It is the elitist thinking. And, and I find it very interesting now to see 
the world have evolved and changed. And that, the ones that we refuse to change is still stuck there. And I, right. we're still fighting against the grain. You're now in New York. You're in the root of New York. You're New Yorker now to me. Yeah. And do you feel like you have to continue to prove yourself and to prove to people around you that I'm here because I'm a photographer, I'm a female photographer, and I can do everything that you can do just because I didn't drink your water. <laughs> I mean, I just feel, I feel, you know, I've only recently per sort of permanently relocated here. It really is in the last three years. And so mm. I feel like it's a whole new experience. Like I'm still buzzing off like the vibe of the city. So I don't, maybe I just haven't noticed all the pressure that's upon me, <laughs> but I'm just so happy to be here and thriving in this community you know, of people who are in this incredible industry. You know, I always say it's like this band of misfits. Like you look at any crew, you take a slice of most crews that are working in New York or LA anywhere. And it's like, there's no sort of rule book as to how people are supposed to get there. You know, some people study photography. Some people are born into fashion families. Some people were born in a small town in the Midwest and like move here and like live in a one room apartment for like 15 years. Like there's just no one way to get here. And so it's just an incredibly, I, I find it in the world that I'm sort of operating in, I find it an incredibly sort of inspiring place to be, you know? And again, you have to cultivate it. You know, you have to make decisions about who you're working with, what jobs you're, you know, I've got, I have clients, you know, clients that I've wanted to work with where you suddenly do your first job with them and it's the creepiest art director like you've ever encountered and you call your agent and you're like, never again, <laughs> you know? And so you just have to like, find your way through it and, and find and, what's authentic to you. And that's the thing about this whole like LA, New York, Midwest thing that I think people are really vibing off of in our industry and in American content creation is authenticity. And there, of course, there will be pockets of people who are going to judge who you are, where you come from, what family are you, I mean, sure. I just sort of has become irrelevant to me because I really think it's just matters you know, what kind of worker you're producing, how authentic is your voice and how compelling is your imagery? And that's what, is, what people are soaking up right now. I love that. So what is your voice? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I think my voice is, you know, an expression of the female experience, you know, and that crosses all kinds of categories from beauty to catalog, to retail, to fashion, to advertising, to swim, you know, um, which has been, you know, a sort of a newer one for me. Um, and sort of, you know, finding, you know, finding again, that authenticity sort of in each girl for each client, like, what's the message? How can I make this feel the most beautiful and real under the circumstances, you know, cause we're always sort of fighting, you know, different variables, but, you know, I feel like, again, you know, trying to find authenticity and collaboration, um, and beauty in all of those moments. Well, you know, in this industry, it has evolved in so many different ways. That for the longest time, a male photographer shoot women because there's a misconception that only male photographer who are straight can make a fe female model feel sexy. And, and and you and I both know that's not always the case. But did you find that to be an issue as you show up on set and all of a sudden a female model look at you and go, oh, wait, you're a woman photographer. How am I going to be sexy for you? Yeah, you know, it's so funny. The, I mean, the thing that comes to mind immediately is that when I first began shooting lingerie, the girls always wanted to wear heels. <laughs> and I was like, girl, take the heels off. Like, I don't need your back arch that way. Like, we're going to do this differently, you know? And then it took a while for the girls. So they kick them off and they're like, can I just leave them right there in case I want them? And I'm like, of course. And if you want them, we can take them back. But let's just try this a different way. You know, I remember being on sets you know, early on when I wasn't shooting in lingerie and the girls walking around in the heels in lingerie just was like, why, why does that, that's like one shape of the body. Like there's other shapes that are sexy and sensual and other expressions of it through the physical form. And so but that has so to do with the girls now, it doesn't, you don't, you very rarely would a girl like request heels on a lingerie shoe. Like it just I think the perspective anymore. have changed, right? And and I, I, I will admit that I'm responsible for that. I'm the one heels. of those guys goes, you show up, you better have those heels and you better arch your back and you better have your chest forward, your butt tweet out and you better be able to turn all the way like you've been studying yoga for 10 years. Yeah. You know, I, I am that photographer for many, yeah. many years. And, I, yeah. and, and because of that, we train our model to behave a certain way. And, and right. at the end of the day, 
it is a job for them and they learn from previous jobs. So by the time they somehow, you know, landed on, <laughs> on your set, you're looking at them like a weird wild animal. Why? I'm like, do you want to wear those heels? They hurt, right? Like, let's take them off. <laughs> and how has that been starting to create that vernacular with women? How are they responsive? How are the models responding to you? I mean, I think they love it. I mean, I think the girls you know, feel comfortable. I mean, everything's changed now, you know, like what women, what with the content that women, young women, adolescent women, older women, like what we're seeing now and taking in as American consumers has just changed so much, you know? So I think that all of these girls that we're shooting, I mean, the diversity and casting that we're seeing now across the board, I mean, in the last five years, it's just been <laughs> this like, I mean, I get goosebumps around all these incredible women that we get to shoot that we never that never would have been in our casting sheets in our casting decks 10 years ago you know it's never wide open and it's because the american public has sort of demanded it they're like we're sick of a singular well, vision well, of what I, this I, is you know i also think there are people in position pushing that vernacular as well right because you know i was unlike you i i I live and die for wanting to be a fashion photographer. And I'll be completely honest with you. And I know some of my colleagues are watching. I still strive for that. I'm still wondering, am I a fashion photographer yet? Because I geographically look in Los Angeles and I started shooting celebrities. And I can tell you in the very beginning when I was shooting celebrities, model agency, biggest agency would not give me models because they're like, you're not a real photographer because you're shooting right. celebrities. Right. Because at that time, celebrities were not on the covers, right. models were not on the covers. Right. But because while I was living in the West Coast, I saw the wave coming. That tsunami was gonna come and it was not gonna go anywhere. When Anna Winter put a, a celebrity on the cover for the very first time, the right. it wasn't just like a slow move of the wave, it was a tidal boom. wave, yeah. it, it boom. Yeah. And when that happened, the perception did change. Like, oh, wait, 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 oh, you show Rosario Dawson, okay, then we're gonna give you an A-list celebrity now because you right. you now know how to, it's so bizarre yeah. to me and I still find that very weird because I'm I'm trained under the eye of Herb Ritz, who was a celebrity photographer, who did shoot fashion, but I couldn't get people to understand and I still struggle with that today. And, and I, I'm the first to say, I still reach out to Vogue editors from all different international editions or Harper's Bazaar editors from all different regions. And, then, and, and crazy enough, when I find out they don't follow me and they don't know who I am, I still go, wow, I am not in this club at right. all. <laughs> and, and that's a really, really, really yeah. weird emotion to go through. And then when I had a pre-talk and you said to me, I don't have that same drive. And, and, um, and, I, and when you said that, I was like, oh, she must be a much happier person than me. <laughs> well, it's funny when we talked last night, you know, I thought a lot about it. I, I mean, who wouldn't want to shoot a Vogue cover? I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, of course, but I just don't lose sleep over it. It just isn't where I come from. And it doesn't, you know, I think that there are a lot of paths in photography. I mean, I feel like I have an incredibly fulfilling, creative career. Like, again, like, I just, I And just, a beautiful one at that, and I, too. And I, can't, I, I feel so grateful to be a part of this industry. And I feel so grateful to have a seat at the table now as the tides are changing. And all those years of all of everything else that was happening and I was sort of riding along and, and you know, your whole week about women and empowerment. And I think as much of you know, female photographers, as much as it's about the way the photographers are engaging and the content is changing, it's also that the ranks at these agencies and the creatives and the people in charge at brands, there are more women sitting at the table. We have more CEO of brands and fashion yeah. and beauty. And I'm dedicating a week to talk to CEO and beauty because of it, because you're right. It is, at first it was, oh, we, we better start hiring women photographer. Let's get to a secret. Let's just make that an obvious right. conversation. You right. know, they went through their change and the changing of the guard. I shot for them and I was, I was one of the people that questioned that can a gay photographer make a female right. model sexy? Right. I thought I could, but at some right. point they didn't think I could. So it's just gone. It, it just ebbs and flows. It was flows. really, I, I, I still question, I'm still like baffled by that mentality, but anyway. Don't let it bother you. <laughs> however, however, when they were in trouble, 
and I'm so glad I got in trouble. Yeah, yeah. they were in trouble. Whether or not on the good and bad, and some people support it, some people, I'm not judging. But what it did do is they woke up and said, oh, wait, we need to hire women photographers and we need to have plus size models. But it wasn't for the right reason in right. the beginning. It was just for the status quo. It just for pure PR. However, right. through that, the vocabulary of women's point of view started to change. It started to change. It started to permeate throughout different parts of the world. But there were people way ahead of that time already. Yeah, Rihanna, Lucida, I mean, what Rihanna did was, I mean, that just broke it wide open. It just sort of, yes. I mean, watching those first shows, you're like, oh my God, this is so beautiful and inspiring. You feel like you're watching the world change before your eyes. Absolutely. And just, it makes what Victoria's Secret's been doing as you know beautiful as it has been at times over the years. It just it just made it clear that they need to, to catch up. You know? Absolutely. But we know you and I both know a dear friend of ours that that has been a pioneer in women empowerment in her own way because it's not Victoria's Secret with thousands of stores and selling bras. Her voice is not as loud, but however, you and I both know the influence that she has done now as, as an editor-in-chief of Sports yeah. Illustrated Swims. Um, and, and amazing what she has done. And you just, by the way, congratulations. Thank to be, you. You're the freshman rookie this year. I I'm <laughs> and I'm, welcome to the family. And I say family because yeah. truly, I've been with the franchise for 10 years. It's my anniversary, <laughs> 10 years. It's okay. crazy. Um, but... But it is a family, and I want you to talk about that experience working for SI because I've been there for 10 years, and I've seen the evolution change. But for you experiencing for the very first time, I love the viewers to really understand what that's like. Yes. So first of all, hi, MJ. I hope you're watching. So we started talking about MJ Day, who is the very like, incredible leader of the Sports Illustrated um, swim brand. And I have to say, before I met her, you know, ev everybody talks about MJ. You know, the girls talk about her, photographers talk about her. She's got this sort of incredibly perfect reputation. And you're like, she can't possibly be that amazing, <laughs> you know? And how inspiring she is and, uh, you know, brilliant and collaborative. And then, you know, I have to say, meeting her, collaborating with her, executing, you know, these pretty intense, this pretty intense shoot with her. Um, we were in the Dominican Republic. You know, I mean, she lives up to every bit of the hype. She is just, an absolute inspiration to photographers, talent, collaborators, to the brand. I mean, she has moved the needle forward in so many ways for all of us, um, you know, and everything she's done with that platform. I mean, she really is about finding 360 female experiences. You know, she wants the girls that she, you're, she's shooting you know, it's not about just how they look in a bathing suit. It's, you know, what they represent, what they're passionate about, you know, their causes that they're supporting. You and know, she gives them a voice. Can. She gives them a resounding voice to, to be who they are. And, and and with that being said, I want to do, I do want to mention this, even though I've been with the franchise for 10 years, I too had to evolve with the brand. And there were many discussions every year I come back. Has the brand changed? How the brand evolved? And one thing that people forget, MJ Day does work for this giant conglomerate called Sports right. Illustrated brand. And she's one of the only few females in, it's all female team that runs the swimsuit. Yeah, just division. a tiny little bubble. A tiny, tiny little bubble. bubble. And she yeah. she yeah. champions that and pushes it against all the people upstairs and upstairs of upstairs. And be able to make what she's done thus far happen, it, it is amazing and it is incredible it's i mean i feel incredible. like the brand would be dead if she hadn't done what she'd done you know i mean she's brought oh, yes. relevancy in a time when it's an incredible platform for these girls uh you know well and, and not only did she embody uh the idea of every shape and form tall now age it, it just you know one thing yeah. that the, about this industry that we don't love to push the meter too much because we are afraid to alienate people so strategically, she really did interwoven this this idea of empowerment in a way that it didn't force it down your throat. Right. She started bringing photographers like you who celebrate beauty in such a different way. I'm just, I am so blessed. I'm still part of the franchise. Yeah. Because I, I did worry. Oh yeah. my gosh, female photographers are getting all the work. My agent called me and said, you're going to take a break. <laughs> Go do Not something true. else for a Not while. <laughs> I mean, because, the reason I said that, Kate, is because my work was defined like GQ, Esquire, 
I push the boundaries. I put heels on top of heels. I get it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that was me. And I'm not apologizing for my work. That's the, the that's what made me the photographer I am today. And yeah. but I that moment of you're gonna take a break, it was truly you need to evaluate your work. You need to look at what is now. He didn't ask me to change my work. You just just look at it, evaluate it. You want to stay the way you are, stay where you are, or you move along and learn. And the first person I call with MJ, like, am I going to lose my job? Yeah. <laughs> am I going to lose my job? Yeah. And, and she's like, no, you will adapt and you evolve. Yeah. And we're going to work on this together because we all were blindly trying right. to figure it out. And, and boy, did she figure it out. And, and yeah. I mean, congratulations for being part of, part of it. You're such a big part of the model search and the brand. I mean, you're sort of part of the fabric of what that is. And, I mean, I think that's the incredible thing about this industry that we do have the opportunity to grow as creatives. And who doesn't want to grow? And who doesn't want to have the opportunity to grow oh, as a creative? And I mean, some people don't. You would think, then, you then would then think get, that. Yeah. Yeah. But you would think that, but you know, I our know, business, I people know. don't want to, people don't want change. And I because know. we are categorized, right? You just, yeah. you said it yourself. I'm a lifestyle, lifestyle photographer. And I'm going to say you're a fashion photographer, you're a portrait photographer. But I think now more than ever that what you said earlier was so true is that you hold on to the identity of who you are. Kindness is now the new fashion. Yeah. Truly it's, is. And there's still editors out there that are a little snobby and a little cray cray, but your time's up. I'm yes. telling you, it's going to go, it will come to you and you're going to realize that's not the way. And, I, and the, just the opportunity now, I think is, yes, we're in this weird timeout zone, but I actually really enjoy it in this way. I enjoy it in a way that we're all now starting up at the same starting block all over again. Right, right. All of us. Right. We get to review as artists, we get to evaluate our work. We look at the block that we're on and how we're going to take off and when that gun goes off, yeah. we can be active again. And, and I know I'm not going to be the same person come out of this. No, I think most people won't be. And I'm so curious to see what creative comes, like how we come out and rise out of this. You know, I think there things had gotten a little bit sad and blink and sort of flat in fashion and some parts of fashion. And I feel like it'll be so interesting to see what the mood of the country is as we start to like wow. rise out of this. I'm so curious. As a beauty photographer, I think you're going to be very, very busy because all we see is skincare and beauty yes, right now. I, and I, think, I think you're going to be, you better get ready. Put those boots on and get ready and get going. I can stop, I can stop homeschooling and go back to <laughs> photography. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, well, absolutely. Just because I, I do see beauty being such a most, most important thing. And, and I was talking to a beauty editor the other day about, like encourage people at home, put on lipstick at home because it yeah. makes you feel good. Not be and for the first time you put makeup on as a woman for yourself, right. not for anybody right. else. And that's yeah. empowering to me. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that. I, I think the vernacular, the way our industry has is evolving. I'm yeah. actually, I'm smiling because I think it will offer more opportunity for people who are kinder, and, yeah. and it also changes people. God knows that I, I needed a little change and adjustment. Yeah. This was a nice little pause in the break. No, I mean, I, ha you know, I feel very lucky to have had a, you know, you know, I've got healthy family members and we're doing well here in Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, the sense of community here is just palpable. You know, it just feels like you're a part of something. I mean, the seventh, the clap at night and the, you know, the sort of the energy here um, has been really, really inspiring. And I think hopefully coming out of it, I mean, as you know, I've done, I have tried to sort of give back in every way that I can through this community of this, you know, industry. And I'm hoping that coming out of this, you know, there's more and more of those opportunities for well, people let's talk to about share, that. you know. And let's talk about all that because you to me truly is a photographer with a cause. And I mean that because you guys out there, you don't know Kate's work, look it up. And then when you think you know her work, you don't know it yet. Because everything you create that comes with passion, comes with a cause. And you have been not just at Berkeley making a magazine, that was the start of just a little seed. What you're doing now with different lobby, different kind of initiative, let's talk about one by one. I want to put spotlight on sure. all of them because I think it's so absolutely incredible and important and we can all learn from you yeah I mean, let's start with the lipstick lobby okay thank you for i mean for bringing me on to talk about this because it's been a really passionate inspiring part of my career i feel like i it's changed who i am and how i make pictures but i had always looked for opportunities to give back and i just couldn't find them i had done little pro bono pieces here and there but 
Um, after the 2016 election um, and the sort of mood of the country changed, mm. Um, you know, people got worried, right? Everybody, you know, felt like we were in trouble and we felt like we needed to act. And um, a small group of us headed up by um, someone we, a bunch of us knew from working at the Gap, Davida Styles, had this brainchild of a social justice beauty brand. And she wanted to start with one lipstick shade um, and she wanted to, to attach it to Planned Parenthood. And it was called Kiss My Pink. And we thought maybe we would start with one shade and see where it went. And we just had an incredible response. I mean, Milk has jumped on Milk Studios where we all shoot, Rossi. I mean, they're just such incredible partners in our creative, in all of our creative endeavors. Um, donate space and equipment. And, you know, we had the hangar in LA and it was just this incredibly inspiring experience. We shot all kinds of influencers and models and um, thought it might stop there did really well. Um, and we have um, now launched a total of four shades, each attached to um, its own um, social justice organization. And um, is it that you purchase these lipstick, the money goes to the donations? Exactly. So each lipstick is, is, is a, each sale of each tube of lipstick is attached to the organization. So the, a, a very large portion of the proceeds goes to, you know, with Kiss by Pink to Planned Parenthood. Our second one was called Outrage, and we partnered with the ACLU, fighting for um, civil wow. liberties. Um, the third one was um, called Fired Up. We partnered with Brady Buzz, which is a, uh, one of the country's oldest gun reform legislation. Gun reform. I get chills even thinking about that one. We actually were able to photograph survivors from almost every major shooting in America, Parkland, <laughs> Columbine, Sandy Hook. I mean, it was, everybody was in tears by the end of the day and it was such a moving experience to have all these all of these survivors in these rooms together being celebrated and heard um that was that was an incredible one followed up by um a partnership with um the unprison project and gloria steinem and the unprison project um and she, gloria steinem interestingly would not um, develop a lipstick with us. She ins insisted on it being a lip gloss. <laughs> so it was a bomb. And it was called <laughs> In the Clear. And it, it actually was one of our best sellers. Um, and we partnered, a prison project was started by a woman, Deborah Jean Stein, who was actually born to an incarcerated mother. And her whole organization is about education and resources for women and families who have been in the social justice system. That's so cool. Um, and so we photograph, you know, in every, in every project, we, there's a sort of a model component that's very, very selectively um, um, curated. And then, you know, so, you know, leaders in social justice and authors and people who are a part of these organizations. So, um, you know, we're at four shades now. Each, absolutely, each one of them has been more inspiring by the next. You know, we're sort of trying to figure out what happens with the platform now. Um, there you need another shade for LGBTQ. Yes. Well, we're just we give me like an idea. Rounding Listen. out the this uh, presidential <laughs> term, we feel like there's no more important issue than voting. So yes, you're absolutely right. You know, no matter what, you know, get, just get to the polls. Everybody's got to get to the polls and make their voice heard. So that's been, it's been, it has been, a, you know, it's an incredible team of women. Um, Kelly Hill, who was formerly at J crew, um, Jill Rayner, who was at Gap as well. And now at Nordstrom's like, it's all women in the industry who donate their time and resources. Milk who collaborates with us, gives us space. I mean, it really is a an incredible, incredible experience. Um, That's the definition of woman empowerment, woman empowerment in action. Thank you so yeah. much for, for what you're yes. doing. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, oh my gosh. It's my pleasure. I wish I could do more of it. You, you have more. <laughs> you are doing more. <laughs> yeah. I know. You are um, involved with so many projects. And I feel like that's what drives your passion. It does. I mean, it, it, it feels like it gives what I do a purpose. You know, it's not just about logging jobs and making money and, you know, where am I published? And it feels like I'm able to sort of use this industry and this community for good in a way that I just feel like is beneficial for everybody, you know? And, and the more people that you ask to be involved in these projects, the more people, I mean, I get so many requests all the time that people want to be, next time you do a lipstick lobby shoot, I want to do it, I want to do it. Like people are like hands up, want to be involved. 
you know, and it's just an, it's, it's just incredibly inspiring and fulfilling, you know, and MJ wow. actually let me do, I did, I don't know if you know about this one, but when MJ and I were meeting for Sports Illustrated Swim and she talked so much about evolving that brand and the 360 platform. And I said, well, why don't we do something when we're down in the, in the Dominican Republic? Let's bring an initiative down there. And she's like, you think you concept it, we'll get behind it if we like it. Um, and they threw their full resources behind us. We were able to put together a photography and empowerment workshop for a group of young high school girls um, on the Savannah Peninsula in the Dominican Republic. And I literally cannot wow. wait for it to come out. It was like tears. These girls were so inspiring. I've you may, I, 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 I'm so, <laughs> I am so blown away by, by you because here's a guy who's been shooting for 10 years for sports illustration. And what I worry about, am I going to get there on time? Am I going to have a nice fly? Hey, how is it going to be when I get too. to my hotel I room? Yeah. I mean, talk about me being superficial. Oh. My God, <laughs> I feel Stop. bad. <laughs> Stop it. I worry about my hotel room too. And with, with the wines cold, like all of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what, but what, what is, what this shows means your true character, who you are, the fact that here's your first job, your freshman at Sports Illustrated Swim, and you didn't go, oh, I'm just going to do what they want me to do. In fact, you came in and loud and strong and said, if I'm doing this, if we can collaborate, we can make this even more purposeful. I think that's incredible. That's absolutely, I don't, I don't know there's many job in our fashion industry allowed to do that before, but I do start seeing that how the industry has been changing and thinking through this pandemic, knowing that they need to be using more resourceful materials and, and, and be more responsible. I've been talking to so many people in the food industry because I have a different side of me in Asia that I do a cooking show, so I'm really attached to my food, food audience and food community, that I have learned that how irresponsible my, my own photo shoot has been with my catering process. Right the food right. that we order, how wasteful, just because we want right. to put a show for the client to show right. up and go, look, opulence, we take right. care of you. Right. Look at us. And yeah. Look at us. That has been the number one most shameful thing <laughs> on my set, I feel. Right. It's the right. waste. It, and I'm learning so much through this process too, like right. how much I can actually be involved. I know I'm not a woman, but I want to join a women empowerment team. With but you know, it, it, it is just, I don't, I don't think it has to be, you know, isolated to women. I think it's a time for everybody, all of the collaborators to come together and decide that we want to do this differently. You know, it, from, and they are, I think, we, 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 I think this is are. truly with there. And, and I have to thank you personally as well, that your generous donation today to Let's Talk oh, so that the initiative where Let's Talk stuff for every guest that comes on the show, my gratitude and thanking them is to donate 500 masks to first responders. And only reason I can do this is collaborating with MJ Day, again, my hero, who is delivering these masks directly to the VA hospitals in New York and also to the hospital around New Jersey where her husband's a doctor so he can get these masks into the hands that really need it. We have delivered over 60,000 masks so far and we have 40,000 on the way. So with your help, you took us over 100,000 mass donations. So thank you, awesome. thank you, thank you. Yeah. And, 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 and when this initiative happened, I have to say, it, it really, it made me feel so good to know that so many people want to figure out how to help, but they don't know how. And I feel it's the same way what, what you talked about today, photography with the cause, that you can take a lipstick and make awareness about gun control Mm -hmm. that's powerful I, I can the crazy thing is i see this visual of you now i just see you take the high heels pull over your shoulder take out the lipstick and put it on and there you are i yeah. mean that's that's whatever yeah. it's going to be the image i see of you <laughs> and i think that's yeah that's a new sexy yeah. that is sexy and that is beautiful i i i, I i'm blown away by you and and we didn't even talk about how beautiful your work it is and the, the fact is that when i look at your work and and I know it's your work because it's so true essence of who you are. And now I understand when I look at your Harper's Bazaar story with Chanel Iman and, and with the models holding the dogs, I, I get it now. I understand the compassion that comes with your point of view because I think all of us try to create a style. We try to push a certain way. And when you're forced to do something that you're not comfortable with or it's truly not you, it's not authentic, the readers can see it. The yeah. art director can see it. And you stuck to your roots and you just kept doing things that make people smile and bring happiness and kindness. And I appreciate that so much about your work. Thank you. Day by day. 
day by day. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see your spread in Sports <laughs> Illustrated swimsuit. Me too. I know. Guys, I know a lot of people ask, it's coming. I know it's we coming. are in a weird it's time. Yeah. It will come and we will get to share our amazing journeys with you. And it's, it's so beautiful. So what's what's I, I, I'm still stuck in this. I have no desire to shoot a book. If it comes, I'll take it. I'm okay, okay, okay. So, so I'm what not is... saying I will pass on it. <laughs> no, no, no. You wouldn't. Never. No, of but course. I'm, like, I, I would no. be, it would be an honor. I would be. Thrilled. You will. You will. I'm well, telling you, you will. But if I don't, it doesn't, like, you But know, kindness it's... wins right now. <laughs> kindness I know, wins. I know, I know. And you're going to win. And the thing is, then what is it that drives you then? If it's for me, I don't want to sound superficial, but for me, I'm still like, I, there's still part of me going, I want to shoot American Vogue. I want to shoot for Anna Winter. And I, I can tell you about four years ago, I gave up on Team Vogue. I met them so many times. Every time I went to but New you York. Team Vogue. Well, this is a story I'll tell you. Yeah. I really, really, I gave up. I just like, the editors just don't get me. And I love her. She's wonderful. Right. And I love what she was doing. Elaine was doing amazing work. And, and she just couldn't find my voice and her voice connect because hello i was shooting esquire with girls wearing heels <laughs> she couldn't understand how i want to do team vogue yeah. i'm like why not yeah yeah <laughs> you know but when the changing of guard happened um because this magazine has evolved and Lindsay white people joined the team the first cover that when she came on i got a call from them and this yeah. is me giving up four years prior already yeah I thought it was a fake email when my producer called me and said, um, Team Vogue's on the phone and they want to talk to you. I'm all, oh, come on. It's, it's so great. Whatever. Like it comes, it, it, I, I, I'm still speechless at that moment. And yeah. I shot a few covers for them. Yeah. And, and also they taught me how to shoot differently too. Not, did, not only did they say, you can shoot for us, but we'll collaborate and evolve your work to shoot for us. We right. love your light. Like chill, they don't need to wear heels. Right. You know, it's that it's that that mentality. And, right. and 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 I have to say, my willingness to change with them and evolve with them made it possible for us to collaborate together. Six years ago, you asked me to change the way I shoot, I'd be like, "Who are you telling me how to do photography? I've been around right. for a while. I know how to do this. I have how many covers?" Right. But I too had to evolve and go. Yeah. Oh, I understand your point of view. I understand what you want to talk about, and I will give you my skill set when you want it to give it to you. So. Reason I want to share that with you yeah. is because Vogue will come your way. I'm, I'm holding. <laughs> so look, I'm bringing bring it, it to bring you. It on, bring I'm bringing it, it to you. Team Vogue. Team Vogue. <laughs> and you know, Team Vogue. I mean, that, <laughs> no, I mean this. That's the. I find that to be such a, such a. You know, people who are resistant to what has happened, you know, in the industry right now. I mean, I feel like the if you can lean into the collaboration, people yes. have good ideas. People have the finger on a pulse of something that you don't and bring ideas to the table that make things come to life. Like it doesn't have to be a one person show. And isn't that the community that you want to live in too? You know, it so is you now. Can, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I just think it's a, it's, you know, it's, I also, it's kind of like the why it's been like the wild west the last few years, you know, it's like, Things out of focus, nothing like, you know, here's like, uh, wait, Film what? came like, back, film yeah. came back. I was like, film? Film? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's some really beautiful things happen and, and, the, and the rules are just all broken. And I mean, look it's at an the, incredible time to be an image maker at this time, you know? Oh, look at the beautiful, amazing photographers this week I get to meet. I know. You know somebody <laughs> like you with that I, I, I learned so much about giving back in a different way and look at, Look at Kat in New York, and, and she's a yeah. breaking groundbreak. I call her a disturber because she disturbed yeah. the industry in the way she worked. Right. And she's still, she's still in that place where I'm waiting for Vogue. I'm waiting for Bella Hadi and Gigi Hadi to show up. And I told her, I go, they well, because they need you. Trust yeah. me, they well, yeah. and just yeah. hang in there. you know. And then we have Zoe Grossman who skyrocketed her career overnight into this phenomenon right. and, and, and growing still. And you see the yeah. team that people Incredible. put around her. Works her work just keep on yeah. growing. And, and that's what's amazing. I think we, when opportunity is given to us that with a support team, we all will continue to evolve and grow. And your work, my work, we're all the same way. I grew with Sports Illustrated of all magazines in the world. Do you think anybody would say you learn and grow from Sports Illustrated because you're shooting swimsuit? But for those guys out there, yes. You do. Because I did. I had to be, I, I had to understand how to speak to my models in a different way. How do I capture them? And when I show up now, when MJ says, what are you going to do today? And my answer to her is always, 
What does she want to say? It's yeah. about the model. Yeah. And can I tell you, sometimes it's actually quite nice to not yeah. hold the responsibility to be the only one yes. talking. And it's no, just it's let so them speak yes. who they are. It's such a powerful and place what MJ has done. Like find it. Like find it. Don't don't impose it on the girls. Like like find a flow together. Make shapes. Let the wind blow. Let the music play. Like there's beauty in all of that, you know. And that's how we do it on the beach. And that's how we do it in yeah. Dominican Republic. That's yes. how we do it in Bali. Oh that's how we that's do it. it. And it, that's it. it. I, I I am so I am so honored to meet you in this way. And I can could have been a, it, welcome to the family. And Thank I I, I love the so fact. Much. No, absolutely. And continue really to make it. those lipstick change know, waves in the I industry. Know. It's, 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 I, I'm still speechless about it because I didn't even know this initiative and that's shameful. That's shameful on my part. Not well, knowing, you know, right? what I think is really interesting. And that's one thing I just want to say to people is that, you know, you can make change in small ways, you know, not every initiative that makes, you know, I mean, we got great press. We have gotten great press from the lipstick on the lipstick lobby, but you know, we don't have huge celebrities, you know, endorsing. We, you know, we have our, our bits in here and there, and, and I, we're so incredibly proud of everyone's involvement. But, you know, we've still made a, we've made a big difference in people's lives, you know. And I think that you can, when you're thinking about giving back and you're thinking about using your platform, you can think in, in small incremental ways that make change. It's like what you're doing with the mask initiative. Like, 500 masks at a time make a big difference, you know? And it's an incredible way to think about not only your own career career in your creative output, but the relationship you have with your community, you know, just like give back in little ways and it grows and grows and grows and kindness and beauty build. Absolutely. I loved how you said that because I was going to echo the same as at the, at the end of the day with the silver lining of all this is that you find your community, you realize that who are the true friends or who are the people who's going to be there for you. And for me, I learned the most is be kind. And on top of that, be patient because all yeah. of us go through this in a very different way at a very different speed. And it's, and, and I thought I learned the hard way the first couple of weeks when I started this. There was a lot of people going, what am I going to go on IG with you? I know I know you for 20 years, but why would I do this? And I took it really personally. It hurt me. I was like, well, well I'm doing this. Why wouldn't you help me? I want to do this because I have initiative. They're like, I'll just donate you the money, but I don't want to be talking to people. I'm not ready to talk to people. But now I'm for two weeks out, three weeks out at a time that so many people want to share. And that's an incredible honor to be able to utilize a platform that, that I didn't even know I had. You know what I mean? I didn't even know what's visible and available to me. And I'm learning from that. And I'm definitely after this talk, I'm going to learn how to use my work in a more positive way because of you. You're not going to have time to be a photographer anymore with your cooking <laughs> show, your talk show. <laughs> I would never stop taking pictures. I love it too much. I really do love it too much. And, and, and it's a blessing. It is an absolute honor to be able to capture people and be able to just just make people smile because at the end of the day, even though when we shoot like crazy editorials or beautiful, gorgeous images, it's that reaction that we love when they look at the monitor. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, we're not looking at Polaroids anymore. Yeah. We look at the monitor and yeah. and they go, oh, I never see myself like this. Oh my God, I can be that beautiful. Oh my, it's yeah. that whole confidence building. And it happens with men as well. Don't, yeah. don't, don't mind that you don't want yeah. to look sexy and hot like Brad Pitt. Yeah. Every single thing, you guys. That's <laughs> trouble. <laughs> that, yeah, and that's what we do, and that's what we love yeah. to do. Well, for those out there who joined me today, thank you so much. And K Power is going to continue power through and making amazing images in the industry. And for those who are watching who has any any influences in Vogue, hire her because <laughs> she's making a difference. And truly, I'm joke all joking aside. What a powerful message to be a photographer that actually photograph for a cause, and that's what our community needs. If I could be in any way to make you shine brighter, I would. Thank you. And Thank I, you well. so much for having me. I can't wait to meet you in real life. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Stay safe and stay healthy out there. You too. Bye, everybody. What an incredible conversation with Kate Powers. This is our first meeting, and it will not be our last. And I am so proud to say that she's now my sister, and she's now my friend, and she's now in my family with Sports Illustrated swimsuit and thank you MJ, MJ Day once again for helping me with the initiative of donating masks to first responders and we'll continue to do our work as best we can slowly but surely with over a hundred thousand masks if you wish to help you can go to life let's talk.com 
and give you a donation. Every little helps, and if you don't have the means, it's okay. Share the words with others out there, and we just want to make awareness for people to know about what we're doing. And thank you. And if you have any suggestions of other guests that should come on to Let's Talk, please DM me. I would love to hear who you like to hear from and who you like me to talk to. In the meantime, everyone, thank you again. Stay safe and stay healthy out there. Bye bye. Thank、you